My name is Dr. Sylvia Black, and I thank you for joining me today. Okay, now I'm coming to you from Chapter 4 in my book, uh, The Champion and You, Win the Battle and the War Against Your Giants. And the topic for today are Rules of Engagement. We're going to talk about offensive strategy versus defensive strategy in our rules of engagement. Basically, it's rules of engagement. Now, rules of engagement basically are the strategy, the plot, and the plan that we use, or that we're supposed to use, or that we're going to be using from now on. Uh, the strategy that we're going to be using to attack the enemy, to beat the enemy, to get the victory over the giants that are attacking us in our mind, our body, and spirit, wherever we are, situation, circumstances, place, thing, okay, whatever your situation and circumstances is. So rules of engagement now, and each time that I bring these messages to you, I'm actually challenging you to use them, to see how well they work for you, okay, because I'm talking to you from a personal point of view. Everything that I tell you about in here, I have already done, and it's already worked for me, it's working for me. Uh, you will see the material manifestations of it when time is right for me to reveal that to you. However, the only thing that you need to concern yourself with now is, you know, today is rules of engagement. <laughs> okay, so, and please do get a copy of the book when it's ready, and I will let you know right here on the air, as well as my YouTube address at sblack3001. I'll let you know exactly when the book will be available, okay, because there's uh, quite a few more chapters that we have to go through. This book is very detailed. I was trying to keep it under 300 pages. And it's already very close to 300 pages, or maybe over right now. And I still have more to put in it. So today we're going to be talking about rules of engagement. Now, have you ever been caught off guard? Have you ever pretty much been, you know, uh, been caught your, your your giant come against you, and you were not prepared, okay, for your attack or for your strategy that you were going to use? Okay, I testified to you before about. Um, and it's something, my violation of my civil rights, okay, and I'm still undergoing um, the criminal portion of it because we are compelling the um, defendant's attorneys to produce a warrant. Now, I already know that there's no warrant, and if they come up with a fake one, then I'm submitting that to the attorney general, and I'm going to say, hey, look, this is what they're trying to do. they already done this. That is what they're trying to do. So the strategy... What happened when I went to court and I talked to my attorney and he's telling me how he's going to, what he's going to say to the judge and how he's going to defend me that day. And he's asking me questions to see if I qualify for his help, okay, because he's a public defender. And uh, one of the questions that he asked me was, do you have any cats in your house? Okay, now as you know, they took my cats from me, you know. Um, so, you know, I'm thinking to myself, now I could have answered him in two ways. This is a strategy now. You have to remember that everything that you do and everything that you say is going to require a strategy, including answering your questions, okay? Now, here this attorney is, you know, a lot of people will probably think, oh, he's on my side. You know, he's trying to defend me. He's helping me. You know, but well, he's working for the company that he works for, okay, and he's getting paid. The longer he drags the trial out, the longer he, you know, and the more money he's going to get. So at that point, you know, now you could have two ways you could have answered him. You could have said, I could have said, uh, is that one of the questions that you have to ask me to qualify me for financial assistance? You know, now that would have been a haughty answer. Um, that would have been, uh, okay, the defensive strategy. That would have been my defensive strategy. I would have attacked him. Okay, um, before anything happened. He asked me a question and I would have attacked him. Okay, that would have been defensive strategy, but it would have been the wrong strategy. Now, the other way which I did answer him, you know, is, of course, I mean, I bowed my head for a moment <laughs> and I set aside a prayer. So, you know, it, what I was really thinking in my mind was that, you know, here this man is asking me this question, 
You know, so it really it brought to mind that he's really he's working for them. He's trying to, you know, he's getting paid, but he's working on their side. He's really trying to get, you know, I don't know why they think that, you know, most black people are criminals. We go through the system and whatnot, we get uh, uh, indicted on a charge or we get accused of something, and they automatically think that you're guilty. And you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty, but as far as they're concerned, you're guilty until proven innocent. So I just told them the truth, you know, they took them on. Um, you know, but I realized, you know, when I bowed my head and I said a sound of prayer and I saw him move the phone closer to my, my face so that he could capture everything I said. And then, you know, I realized that, oh God, you know, I'm like, SOL, you know, SOL, y'all know what that means, right? And um, so I just said, you know, they took him on because I was like, you know, I thought you was my friend, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I really, really, I knew he was a lawyer and whatnot. I knew he wasn't really my friend. But in that instance, in everything, that's what I'm trying to point out to you. Even in, like, when you answer somebody's questions, you know, you have to choose which strategy you're going to use. And we're going to talk a little bit about so I can explain to you exactly uh, what those strategies will consist of. Now, most of us have been caught off guard, okay, and not knowing, you know, how to uh, apply the Word of God to our situation, not knowing how to answer how to deal with the situation so that we still stay in the will of God. And a lot of times things happen to us which actually brings us out of the will of God. And then we have to pray harder and we have to ask God to forgive us. And then we have to go back to them and possibly even apologize even though we know that we're not wrong in what we did. Well, we just have to do it as an act of God, you know, as a child of God. Okay, so now we're going to get into some of the, the meat of the, of the soup here. Okay. Offensive strategy versus defensive strategy. What is the difference? Now, competitive strategies are divided into offensive and defensive. Offensive strategies directly go after the Giants' defensive, directly go after your Giants. Okay, you pursuing them, I'm coming after you, baby, with everything that I got, you know, and I'm going to attack you, and I'm going to keep on coming at you until something happens, okay? Now, defensive strategy is used to discourage our giants and also can be referred to as a passive strategy okay in this particular defensive strategy you're ready for the giants to attack but you're not going to do anything until they attack you first and that's usually the strategy that I use you know because I know that you know they're heathens or whatever you know that they're not going they're not going with the will of God that they're not you know that they're doing wrong you know what I mean I know that you know they and, and you got to realize you know these people don't care nothing about you they're doing the job. Simple as that. So the basic thing is that you have to realize what you do, you stay in the will of God. And you answer it basically, I usually use a defensive strategy. But, you know, it, when, it, when it comes to direct contact with the enemy, you know, if I'm in physical contact with you, I use, I use my, uh, my defensive strategy. I'm defending my territory. Okay? But when I'm in the Word of God, when I'm on my knees praying, when I'm at home or what have you, or when I'm in church, I use my offensive strategy. I'm coming after you, devil, with prayer and supplication. I'm coming after you with the Word of God. I'm coming after you with everything that I got, baby. Okay? That's my offensive strategy that I use when we're in church. When you're on your knees praying, that's when you're using your offensive strategy. Okay? Um, now, in earthly wars, uh, between countries and kingdoms, there exist two types of warfare within our individual strategies, and they are offensive and defensive types of warfare. In the spiritual fight, they are the same types of warfare, and both require from us a personal initiative and active participation, since Satan does not take a rest, okay? He goes to and from to see who he can devour, okay? And we should always be involved in both of the defensive and offensive strategy, and we should be prepared to use both strategies in this war. Okay, in case nobody didn't tell you, baby, we're on the battlefield for the Lord. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about defensive defensive warfare. Okay, defensive warfare is when you defend your own territory. A forced battle launched in response to attack from an opponent and a defensive decision made based on an offensive one. They broke into my house illegally, they didn't have a warrant. Okay, they stole my cats. I'm using my defensive strategy. I'll, you attack me. Now I'm coming after you, baby, and I'm attacking you. But I'm attacking you not only with the word of God, in prayer and supplication, 
but I'm also using my physical, um, whatever's available to me in the flesh. I can sue you. I'm going to do that because that's what's available to me. I can do other things. It would be out of the will of God, and it would actually result in either jail or hell, or both. <laughs> and I don't want either. So I use the legal system to work for me. Okay, and that's in my defensive strategy. Okay. Now, in your defensive strategy, another way, uh, now the cost, Satan is constantly, our giants are constantly attacking us, okay? They're constantly, he goes to and fro to see who would devour, you know that already. And we're not going to uh, magnify, you know, the devil here, okay? Now, in our defensive warfare, we are protecting our territory, okay? We're protecting our territory. We're nurturing and nourishing uh, our territory in a spiritual manner in order for us to grow in the likeness of Christ. Now, the offensive warfare will consist of an aggressive warfare against the enemy, characterized by its dynamic nature and not waiting for the enemy to launch his attack, but going to the enemy in his territory and gaining rather than losing territory. Okay, in offensive warfare, the, uh, the enemy is identified, his strategy is recognized, and the attack is a decision the offender makes based on his knowledge, his or this knowledge. In spiritual offensive warfare, believers attack Satan either to release other believers or to release themselves from his captivity. The decision that the prodigal son took was an initiative and an offensive warfare. To release himself from Satan's captivity and to restore him his original territory. Evangelism is a type of offensive warfare in which uh, we engage uh, to liberate captives from Satan's territory and transfer them to Christ's kingdoms. Offensive warfare aims to restore and liberate. Lost sheep who were once act, uh, members serving in church and now they are not anymore. These members need to be sought out seriously and diligently and once found, probably full of wounds and hurt and pain and um, because they have been attacked and unable to uh, counteract that attack or use any kind of strategy to get back at them or may have used the strategy that got you in, in trouble. Now we need to minister to you this healing. And I'm talking to anybody pretty much, you know, anybody who needs to know this information. Okay, non-believers who have never heard about Christ and his message of salvation. Our Lord also needs to know about this type of strategy. Our Lord's recommendation and command was that the gospel reaches to all the nations. Those non-believers once reached out and preached to need to be uh, crafted in the body of Christ and in the church. We can only reach the world offensively advanced into Satan's territory to salvage both lost sheep and non-believers, thus fulfilling the Lord's wish, found in John 10 and 16, which says, And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Okay. Uh, we cannot afford to sit comfortably in the churches satisfied with defending our own territories against Satan attacks. Because when Satan attacks you, he's attacking everyone. Okay, because he's going to try everyone. If he can't get to you personally, he's going to try to reach your family. Your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your aunt, your uncle, Bubba them, June Bug and them, and all of that. They're going to come after them. So what you need to, we need to be able to do is to teach our family how to use our offensive and our defensive strategy. I love basketball. I love watching basketball. I love participating in it. It's a great sport. I love the offensive and the defensive strategies that he used. And if you ever watch a baseball game, you will see how the offensive and the defensive strategies are used. Now there are rules in the game. Okay, as long as you follow the rules, okay, you be able to use your offensive strategy and you'll still be within the will of God. Which means that God will be the head of the battle. He will be there organizing and coordinating it to make sure that it goes right. Now warfare strategies can be found, this is a, a story of a warfare strategy found in the book of 2 Kings uh, 13, 14 through 19 which delineates six strategies required to launch a successful war against Satan. Okay, and I'm going to read it. Okay? Elisha had become sick with illness of which he would die. Then Joash, the king of Israel, came down to him and wept over his face and said, O oh, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and their horsemen, 
And Elisha said to him, Take a bow, or take a bow and some arrows. And he took himself a bow and some arrows. And then he said to the king of Israel, Put your hand on the bow. So he put his hand on it, and Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. And he said, Open the east window. Okay. And he opened it, and then Elisha said, Shoot. And he shot. And he said, The arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. You must strike the Syrians at Aphek till you have destroyed them. Then he said, Take the arrows. So he took them. And he said to the king of Israel, Strike the ground. So he struck the ground three times and stopped. And the man of God was angry with him and said, You should have struck five or six times. Then you would have struck Syria till you had destroyed it. But now you will strike Syria only three times. Second Kings 13, chapter 13, verses 14 and 19. Now, one of the rules of engagement, uh, I mean, there are many of them, and I, this might be a two-part, or you can always get the book when you, if you want to know the rest of them. But I might do a two-part on this. First, we need to establish an intention to fight. Okay, and Elijah said to him, take the bow and some arrows. So he took himself a bow and some arrows, and then he said to the king, pull out your hand with the bow. And so he put his hand out, and Elijah put his hand in his hands. Okay, Elijah's orders to the king laid down the prerequisite for launching a war. And that is by getting on the mark and getting set. You know how you be all getting ready to race, get ready, get set, and then you just, you know, push off or whatever, even when you're swimming in a swimming championship. Okay, uh, so St. Paul confirms the same concept of Ephesians when he talks about putting on the six pieces of God's armor and keeping them on all the time with full obedience and readiness. Otherwise, our victory will be jeopardized and our wounds will be great. Our fight is like a roaring lion. So now we have to put on the robe, to put on our full armor of God before uh, God so that he can play his role. Okay, God needs to play his role in, in our fight. Okay, he's the head of our fight. This is his fight, his battle. Okay, um, the Bible provides many examples to mention a few. We touch the Jordan River and God will split it. Remove the stone and God will raise Lazarus. Bring the sick to Christ and he will heal them. Okay, those are just a few of some of the promises that God. Be unsparingly focused. Always on the lookout. Always on guard. To see, you know, who, I mean, because the devil goes to and fro to see who he can devour. We have to be ready, baby. You have to know that these people are not your friends. Okay, they may act like your friends. They may smile on your face and whatnot. But believe me, they will stab you in your back the first chance that they get. Okay. Uh, we need to shoot without stopping. Okay, that means pray without stopping. Praise without stopping. Okay, shoot symbolizes the offensive nature of our battle. Don't wait for Satan to attack before you resist. Be spiritually alert and always uh, spiritually dressed, which I'll talk about in, in, the, in this also in this chapter. Aim at total victory. Don't settle for less and keep fighting until you have achieved victory. Okay, 2 Kings 13 and 13, 19. Okay, lack of continuity in shooting symbolizes lack of diligency, perseveringly and incessantly continued in battle against Satan and subsequent relapse of all habits and sins. Got to keep on going, baby. You got to keep going because once you stop, then you're subject to relapse. Okay, we have to pray in our secret chamber. It's like Elijah did in his secret chamber. And he was victorious in the outcome of the battle that was determined. Some defensive weapons, submission. Okay, we have to manifest in letting God have control and doing His will at the same time. Resistance. Resist the devil and he will flee, but it doesn't mean he's not going to show his ugly face again. So every time he comes, you have to resist him. He's going to leave you and eventually he'll recognize, hey, I ain't getting nowhere with her, so let me try her sister or, or brother. Be steadfast in faith. Be sober, vigilant. Okay, because the adversity, ad adversary, the devil walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in faith, knowing that the same sufferings you are experiencing by your brotherhood in the, are also being experienced by others. You're not alone in this in this fight. Okay, we need to develop mountain moving faith. Like I said before, if you don't feel that you have the ability to do that, or if you don't know how. You ask God, say, Lord, please, can you help me to develop 
mountain moving faith. You know, I want to trust you, I want to believe you, but I don't know how. And you ask him to teach you. But mountain moving faith is a gift of the Spirit which is given to certain people. Mark 16, 16. We need to have a belief system of faith. Always proclaim to God, I always trust you, Lord. I was sitting there the other day and I was crying and I was and I had to remember what I'm telling you and I practice it myself. I said, I am victorious. I am a champion. I am a winner. Through the tears, I was claiming victory. And that's what you have to learn how to do when you're uh, developing a belief system of faith. Uh, develop confidence generated faith. You know, if you have people around you that vex your spirit, you need to stop hanging out with them. You know what I mean? Reduce your time that you spend with them. Build your confidence and your strength up and try to pre you can preach to them. Try to encourage them. Okay, both of these require defensive weapons in the face of Satan. David used both of them when he faced Goliath. Remember when I talked about that. We always need to be alert. Don't give place to the devil, never. Okay, we need to be recovering. Not remaining entangled in the snares of Satan, but getting up and saying with the prodigal son, do not rejoice over me, but the enemy. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light in me. Micah 7 and 8. Abstinence. We need to abstain from sin. Purposely resist sin. Uh, there will be testing of the spirits. Since Satan's main strategy is deception, we need to constantly test our thoughts by comparing them against the truth. 1 John 4 and 1. Revealing, reveals thoughts in the biblical order and recommended by the early fathers who believed that revealing thoughts weakened them. Avoid worldly distractions. Why do people believe in lies? Because they choose to. Okay? They choose to. And you can find uh, 2 Timothy 2, 3 to 4, which I have in my book. Okay? Now, we are in constant warfare with Satan both defensive and offensive strategy and or you can and sometimes you could be using one or the other or you could be using both at the same time like David did with the lion okay uh, both defensive and offensive warfare is required require weapons and strategies the good news is that uh, we are not alone in this constant warfare our victory is sure in the presence of the Holy Spirit some verses that provide the existence and assistance of the Holy Spirit Likewise, the Spirit also helps our weakness. With the help of the Holy Spirit, correct us, corrects us with the right strategies. Okay? Now I have a list of strategies also. I don't know if I'm going to try to get through them to the rest of this broadcast. We need to pull on the full armor of God. Okay? That's one of our strategies that we need to use. And like I said, we, can, we may have to use both offensive and defensive strategies in our battle at the same time and sometimes you use one before the other okay but always one or the other or both okay do not go into the house and out of the house naked in other words pray before you go out if you don't say nothing but the Lord's Prayer and thank God for what he's done for you you know uh, when you're looking in the mirror okay God's words will help us defeat our giants all the time every time it will always help us I can guarantee you, I'm living proof of that. Uh, be ready to stand against your giant, no matter what comes your way, baby. Storm, rain, clothe yourself in righteousness. Okay, proclaim that you are going to take back, we are going to take back what, this, what the devil has stolen from us. Choose our weapons carefully. Again, like I said, pray without ceasing. Okay, remember that fear is the work of the enemy. God doesn't give us a spirit of fear but of love, power, and a sound mind. Okay, remember the rewards that God offers us for being diligent and steadfast in His Word. Okay, that should be a motivator right there. Knowing that if we come out, if we obey His Word and we use our strategies and our warfare effectively and efficiently, then God will bless us with victory. Okay, and then when we have the victory, we'll be able to have uh, peace of mind, you know. Uh, Realize that you are not in this world to live up to others' expectations. Run if you have to. Like I told you before, when I came to Buffalo, I was running away from something. And I'm about to run again if I have to. 
be ye equally oaked. 2 Corinthians 6, 14, 16. Come out from among them. We need to come out from among them and with a quickness. Submit to authority, okay? Be respectful of authority. Not necessarily the authority, the respect that they deserve, but the respect that God gives, instructs us to give. Now remember, this list is not inclusive, and I'm not going to be able to get through all of them that I have listed in this book. Lazy people don't kill giants. And Proverbs 6, 6 to 11. The enemy looks big because you think small. Okay, think positive. Philippians 4, 6 to 9. Uh, use God's words and not your own. Focus on the rewards and not on the situation. Yeah, I gotta put, I'm gonna have to move that uh, somewhere else. You know, focus on the rewards, baby. And not on the situation, okay? And always remember that, uh, okay? A soft answer turneth away wrath, Proverbs 5 and 1. Respect authority, as I said before. Uh, you're going to be uh, submitting to authority, but you're also going to be respecting authority. Okay, so don't forget that. You submit to authority and you respect authority. Okay, uh, you're going to be suffering. You suffer for being a Christian. You're always going to do that. First Peter 4, 12 to 19. Okay, uh, press towards the goal, the mark of a higher call. Philippians 3, 12 to 16. Stand firm on the words of God and don't sit down on God's words. Matthew 24, 13 and Revelation 3, 21. Uh, develop and pursue faith and endurance. Hebrews 11, 1, James 1, 2, and 8. Wait on the Lord. Okay, that's sort of self-explanatory. Uh, shout it out if you have to, you know. What I talked about with the blind men, you have to say, Lord, have mercy on my soul. You know, have mercy on me, O oh God. Fear is only the work of the enemy, like I said before. If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Do not uh, repay enemy evil with evil, 1 Peter 3 and 9. Fruits of the Spirit, we need to develop our fruits of the Spirit. And we need to live by the Spirit's power. Okay, and that's it. I didn't think I was going to get through it. But today I was talking about my book, uh, The Champion in You, Win the Battle in the War Against Your Giants. And these strategies, the offensive and defensive strategies, can be used in any situation. But remember that everything that we do is a fight because everybody is considered an enemy. Okay? Nobody, they don't care nothing about you. They care about themselves and they want what they can get out of you. You know what I mean? There are some nice people in this world, but nice people don't make it to heaven. So I want to thank you for joining me today for Real Estate Religion and You. And you can get a copy of this book on uh, Books Galore and more. So anyway, I want to thank you for joining me today and I ask you to ho holler at us just the next week where I'm going to be continuing to talk about the next subject here, we're going to be talking about some more interesting stuff, which is all going to apply basically to us helping us to defeat our giants, to fight our giants, and to defeat our giants with everything that we have. So I just want to say Happy Father's Day to the Lord, and Happy Father's Day to God and to Jesus, because truly they are my Heavenly Father. And peace out, y'all. I'll see you next week.